U.S. Air Force Guided Missiles Research and Development Program, under direction of the Air Materiel Command, is aimed toward the development of guided missiles for use in the air defense of the continental United States, the tactical support of our ground forces, and for strategic air warfare. To accomplish these threefold objectives, four major types of missiles are being developed. Air-to-air, air, air to surface, surface to air, and surface to surface. The air-to-air -air missile will provide a fighter or bomber with a weapon which can destroy an enemy aircraft at ranges up to five nautical miles. One project, MX-904, with the Hughes Aircraft Company, is being carried on for the development of this type missile. Designated the Falcon, this missile, XAAMA-2, is being developed for offensive use by interceptor aircraft. A secondary objective is its development for defensive use by bombardment aircraft. The interceptor-launched Falcon is 86 inches long, 6 inches in diameter, weighs 106 pounds, and will carry a blast-type warhead weighing approximately 7 pounds. Ground launchings of test missiles from a zero-length launcher were initiated at Holloman Air Force Base in March 1949. A total of over 200 missiles have since been expended in development tests. The Falcon, capable of a maximum speed of 2,000 miles per hour, will be guided by means of a semi-active radar seeker. It will be able to intercept enemy aircraft traveling at 1,000 miles per hour at ranges up to five nautical miles. Airborne launchings against B-17 drone aircraft are scheduled in 1951. Launchings from F-89 aircraft at high speeds and high altitudes in 1952, with activation of the first missile-equipped fighter unit expected in 1953. The Falcon should be ready for operational use in mid-1954. The development of powered air-to-surface missiles will eliminate the necessity for bomber aircraft to fly over a defended target area and will provide pinpoint accuracy at ranges up to 300 miles. Unpowered remotely controlled bombs, such as the Razon, have been developed to greatly increase the accuracy of conventional bombs. The Razon missile, VB-3, is a high-angle, free-fall, 1,000-pound general-purpose bomb, radio-controlled in both range and azimuth. The control surfaces of the tail assembly steer the bomb in the desired direction. The fin assembly contains the radio receiver, the gyro unit to control the roll orientation of the bomb, a battery, servo units to move control surfaces, and a flare to aid the bombardier in following the bomb. The controllable bombs will be carried internally in standard bombardment aircraft to which have been added a minimum amount of auxiliary equipment. A special optical device attached to the Norden bomb site permits the image of the bomb to be viewed simultaneously with the image of the intended target. Control signals as required are initiated by moving a lever on the control stick box in the proper direction. The Raison missile first saw tactical use in the Korean theater. By the end of 1950, approximately 450 Raison bombs had been dropped. This weapon is especially effective against bridges, railroad tracks, roads, and airfields. After the initial phase of Raison operations in this theater, during which difficulties were experienced in getting the system perfected, the Raison has proven itself to be a very valuable weapon. The Tarzan missile, ASMA-1, Project MX-674, has been developed by Bell Aircraft Corporation. This missile is a remotely controlled vertical bomb guided in both range and azimuth. It consists of a 12,000-pound bomb to which is attached a controllable tail unit. The Tarzan missile is suitable for use against targets requiring deep penetration 
and very heavy explosive loads. Battleships, concrete fortifications and structures, and dams and dikes are considered suitable targets. Ballistics tests have been conducted and ballistic tables prepared. Tactical evaluation tests of this missile are now being conducted by the Air Proving Ground Command. The Rascal missile, XASM A2, Project MX776, is being developed by Bell Aircraft Corporation. This missile, which will carry an atomic warhead, is 32 feet long and 48 inches in diameter. It weighs 18,000 pounds and is powered by a liquid rocket motor to a speed of 1,200 miles per hour. Guidance is accomplished by relaying a radar picture from the missile to the controlling aircraft, which in turn sends appropriate commands back to the missile. Rascal will have a range of 100 to 150 nautical miles, with a 50% probability of striking within 500 feet of a selected target. First firing of the Rascal missile is scheduled for the latter part of 1951. The Shrike, a scaled-down version of Rascal, has been designed to provide an economical test vehicle. It is 22 feet long, 21 inches in diameter, and has a range of 50 nautical miles at speeds of 1,000 to 1,400 miles per hour. Shrike has provisions for a standard 1,000-pound general-purpose bomb. Air launching tests of the Shrike RTV A4 vehicle are now underway at Holloman Air Force Base. On the last firing in November 1950, the Shrike traveled 64 miles at 1,330 miles per hour. It is anticipated that Shrike tests will have been completed by July 1952, while the Rascal missile is expected to be operational by mid-1954. The surface-to-air missile is being developed to provide a guided supersonic pilotless interceptor which can destroy enemy aircraft. The Bomark missile, Project MX-1599, is being developed to intercept and destroy supersonic enemy targets at ranges of 250 nautical miles and altitudes up to 90,000 feet. This program, a joint effort by Boeing and the University of Michigan, will encompass all aspects of air defense from early warning to target interception. The missile will be approximately 35 feet long, 30 inches in diameter, and will have a maximum speed of 1,800 miles per hour. Mid-course guidance will be by means of a command radar with terminal guidance provided by an active pulse-type radar target seeker. The ultimate Bomark missile and defense system is expected to be available in 1956, while an interim system having a range of 100 nautical miles will be available in 1954. Background data for the design and development of the Bomark missile configuration and all of its components have been provided by the GAPA project. During the course of this project, a series of 601-type liquid rocket guidance and control missiles were fired. Four attempts at beam rider guidance were successfully completed during the last phase of the 601 flight test program. These beam rider flights substantially exceeded the performance of all supersonic beam riders flown to date. In addition to the GAPA 601 flights, a series of GAPA 602 ramjet propelled missiles were also flight tested. These ramjet tests were extremely successful. They were also the first missiles of the ramjet type to attain a velocity in excess of Mach 2.3 and were the first to attain altitudes in excess of 58,000 feet with sustained combustion. More than 100 firings of various GAPA test vehicles have provided information on aerodynamics, propulsion, guidance, control, 
and handling procedures which will be directly applicable to the development of the Bomark missile. The surface-to-surface -surface missile is being developed as a precision weapon capable of striking selected targets with high accuracy at ranges extending to 5,500 nautical miles. Three surface-to-surface -surface missile projects are now under development. The Matador missile XSSM-A1, Project MX-771, is being developed by Glen L. Martin to meet the need for a 500 statute mile missile capable of carrying a 3,000 pound warhead to a predetermined surface target. This missile, powered by a J-33 turbojet engine, will have a speed of 600 miles per hour at an altitude of 40,000 feet. It is 34 feet long and has a swept back wing with a span of 23 feet. Launching of the Matador is accomplished by means of a solid rocket which boosts the missile from a zero length rotable launcher at a speed of 180 miles per hour. Present flight tests at Holloman Air Force Base are being conducted by the 550th Guided Missile Wing and the Glen L. Martin Company. By November 1950, 15 Matador missiles had been fired in the development of propulsion, control, and guidance systems. The present 250-mile mid-course guidance system is a microwave Loran type employing three ground stations. Engineering production design is underway to provide a tactical Matador missile by mid-1952. The SNARK missile, XSSM-A3, Project MX-775, under development by Northrop Aircraft, is a surface launch subsonic missile designed to have a range of 5,500 nautical miles. The test vehicle pictured here has a configuration similar to the tactical missile, but is shorter and lighter. The tactical SNARK missile is 63 feet long and powered by a turbojet engine. It will be launched from a rocket propelled sled running on horizontal rails. The launching shown is that of a dummy snark missile of the same weight and aerodynamic configuration as the test vehicle, but having fixed control surfaces and no power plant. It was launched in December 1950 to prove launching techniques. The snark missile will carry an atomic warhead at 620 miles per hour at 50,000 feet altitude. Guidance will be by means of an automatic celestial navigation system with an expected accuracy of 50% hits within 1,500 feet of the target. Flight tests of radio control test vehicles will be conducted during 1951 at Holloman Air Force Base. Tests of this tactical prototype SNARK with guidance are scheduled at the Long Range Proving Ground during 1952. The SNARK missile will be ready for tactical use in 1954. The Navajo II XSSM A4 Project MX770 under development by North American Aviation will be a ramjet powered missile capable of carrying an atomic warhead more than 2500 nautical miles at a speed in excess of 1800 miles per hour at 80,000 feet altitude. This missile is 68 feet long, 68 inches in diameter, wingspan 28 feet, and will weigh 61,000 pounds. Guidance will be by means of a self-contained stellar supervised inertial system. The inertial auto navigation system shown under test in the laboratory has undergone 24 airplane flight tests of which in the last six flights, the average magnitude of errors has been less than one mile for a one-half hour flight time. 
The stellar supervised inertial system is now being assembled for flight test during 1951. Large rocket propulsion systems are now being tested at North American Aerophysics Field Laboratory. These liquid oxygen ethyl alcohol rockets will be boosters for the tactical missiles. The rocket motors now under test are rated at 75,000 pounds thrust for 60 seconds. Now under development are lightweight tubular type thrust chambers, aluminum injectors, and lightweight high-speed turbine pumps which when incorporated into the present booster will make it even more efficient than the booster shown under test. Over 50 motor firings have been accomplished. The highest total impulse obtained on a single firing being over 5 million pound seconds at 83,000 pounds thrust for 61 seconds duration. The complete system is scheduled for qualification test in 1951. Flight tests of turbojet-powered test vehicles, similar in configuration to the Navajo II, are scheduled to start in 1952. These vehicles, which will be taken off and landed by remote control, will provide both subsonic and supersonic data on aerodynamics, control, guidance, and recovery required prior to initiation of flight tests of Navajo II tactical missiles. Initial flight tests of the Navajo II missiles are scheduled to start in 1954. This missile, with an expected accuracy of 50% hits within 1,500 feet of the target, should be ready for operational use in 1957. The ultimate Navajo III missile, having a configuration, speed, and accuracy similar to that of the Navajo II, but with a range of 5,500 nautical miles, should be ready for tactical use in late 1958. The research and development tests now in progress on United States Air Force missiles and their components is providing the essential data today for the guided missiles of tomorrow.